Okay, but our Bible verse today being in Romans chapter 8. I really appreciate this chapter for many things because it really separates our spiritual life and it separates our physical uh, inclination to the sin. And it really divides it and it draws a big wedge and because this is two different things. This is one of the best chapters to describe that wedge between holiness and sinfulness. And we're going to dig in and study together. But before we start, as um, usually I will ask Holy Spirit, please, Jesus and God, we are asking you to be with us, to guide us, to help us to dwell in your Holy Word together. Help the Holy Word to come from my mouth so that I will not be speaking not my only experience but that the holiness from you above will say will say the right words that are needed to be heard in this moment we are praying in jesus his holy name lord be with us okay therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus so being in christ jesus what really means is we are new creation this we practice the teachings of christ for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has set you free from the law of sin cater to our sinful desires this is not why we have the word of god the word of god is to read it and to find if there is something that doesn't belong in my heart truly look inside your heart don't look at your neighbor's heart. Don't look at your friend's heart. Look at your heart and pray for others. This is why we are studying the Bible. This is why we want to be Christ followers. So this is the first concept of genuinely following the Christ. Are you genuinely looking inside your own heart right now? Or are you thinking about, oh, it would be nice for somebody else to listen to this, right? Sometimes we do that because we want to change other people. But no, we have to change ourselves. We have to save ourselves first. How we do that? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. Spirit of life has set us free. Law of the spirit of life set you free from the law of death for what the law could not do weak as it was through the flesh god did sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin he condemned sin in the flesh he gives us a chance because of his sacrifice for us to redeem us from the hands of the devil so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us so again we need to be mindful of the teachings of christ we don't call ourselves christ followers we don't call ourselves christ followers who do not recognize the importance of transformation because this is very connected and very important part. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And what are the, the works of the flesh? They are here. We will see them. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. Now, we know the fruits of the spirit and we can understand that there's a difference between the spirit the holy spirit it has to be holy so there's a differentiation the works of the flesh and the works of the spirit they're different things they're not the same for the mind set on the flesh is death okay this is very clear message again it's chapter 8 romans verse 6 the mind set on the flesh is death but the mind 
set on the spirit is life and peace life and peace comes together because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward god for it does not subject itself to the law of god again we're talking about the law so jesus came to fulfill the law and keep kept commandments by himself he was just trying to show the point of those commandments for it is not even able to do so okay let's read this again because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward god for it does not subject itself to the law of god flesh cannot be subjected to the law of god by itself it's not able to do so so god is love when we look at him we understand where the source of love is coming from nothing we can do alone by ourselves and those who are in the flesh cannot please god however you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of god dwells in you but if anyone does not have the spirit of christ he does not belong to him okay very simple spirit of christ is his character and his teachings absolutely it's all together if christ is in you though the body is dead because of sin yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness you see this if christ is in you though the body is dead because of sin the body is dead because of the sin yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness again the big battle here but if the spirit of him who raises Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So Jesus is going to make miracles spiritually and when he will come too, he will resurrect us. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you are living according to the flesh you must die but if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body you will live so only with christ by his example by his sanctification in our thoughts and our hearts is that we can have the spirit of god living in us and doing things that without him would be impossible because the flesh would overtake sin grows like a mold it spreads so fast if you let one sin in it doesn't come alone it wrecks the whole family whole relatives bunch of different relatives from all over the world are going to come and seven more wicked demons will possess especially hunting the people who already know about God. If you are a little closer to God, every step will make them come up with different collaborate plans. And on and that, I have a video. You can just uh, scroll down the channel. It's one of the recent videos that I posted today about how to keep the devil out of our lives by Andrew. Um, and you will, you will really appreciate it so make sure you take time and listen to that video it's a great great sermon on the last days and satan's schemes and if we understand the pattern that he is working uh, and using on people right now today it will be so much easier to resist his other temptations and, um, and attacks for all who are being led by the spirit of god these are sons of God. And to me, this is one of the most important messages in this whole chapter. I love it because we can have a clear understanding. We want to be sons and daughters of Almighty God. We want to be eternal sons and daughters. Sons and daughters for eternity. For eternity. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, 
These are sons of God. We can say in another way, who are not led by the Spirit of God, who do not practice holiness, who do not follow Jesus, who don't know the difference between the flesh and the Spirit, Holy Spirit works, those are not sons of God. They're not going to have place in eternity because nothing unclean will enter the kingdom of God. For you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father, our Heavenly Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, heirs also heirs to God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Jesus suffered and we clearly studied in our previous study in Matthew the um, signs when the Jesus is going to come and what's going to happen before his second coming and that pointed out that we will have to go through tribulation we will have to go through tests tribulations and suffering and only the one those who are patient till the end will stand the very very last moments with the um false miracles and with the false because people sometimes um, pay too much attention to the miracles but not to where those miracles are coming from and we have to know if we know the, the way devil attacks and schemes people, uh, word of God, nothing unclean. There is no spirit of the Lord. If you're drunk, read the word of God. I am sure Satan can make different miracles and it make you feel even better. Why? Because he wants to prove it to you. Satan wants to prove it to you. Keep doing what you're doing so I can trap you. So there is no true healing in there. And that, that's why the person is still suffering because we need to bring our salvation in the hands of the Lord himself. We need to come to him directly. Step number one. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. That was the Bible verse for today. Knowing that my grandfather has um, lost his life for Jesus, he was taken um, when he when my, my mother was little in Ukraine and taken and suffered and died in prison it's very it's very sad to talk about something like this but we all know when we truly truly in a difficult um, situation of trials and tribulations whom are we going to turn to if we have faith and hopefully we do have faith till then we will still be turning to God and in spite that fact that perhaps things are not the way you know we we would like them to be we still have that love in relationships because when you love your family even if your child is turned away from the righteous path there's also heirs of god and fellow heirs with christ if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him this is, um, we can think about this as a relationship that we love the blesser no matter of his blessing. We love the giver of life no matter of the gifts. Um, and why it's important? Because there are so many Bible verses that point out to this kind of relationship that are not that are not ego selfish because if we only rely on um, blessings of the blesser then this relationship are going to possibly cut us short 
from going through tribulation, from suffering for the Jesus name because we expect him to be blessed all the time. So this is where the prosperity gospel um, is not a true gospel. This is where we are giving glory to God for good things and when things are not so good. It's, we see this in the example of Job. He was suffering tremendously. He lost his home, he lost his business, he lost his everything. Moreover, he lost his health, his children, his wife. But he did not lose his connection with his blesser, with the Heavenly Father who blesses us because we have a relationship. He first loved us and we love him as well. It's like in a marriage. If you truly love a person back, and Jesus showed us how he loves us already, but if you truly have a good marriage and good um, union and a person for some reason stop giving us uh, for health reasons or whatever reasons cannot do certain things, cannot earn as much money, lost the job, whatever. No, God is not like that. Of course, God does not lose the job. He's almighty and powerful. But what we could see in this example is we don't lose our connection with our spouse because he's no longer providing us with so and so much money because he has changed his job or because his situation has changed because his um, other things have changed for example his health or whatever it is so we have a situation on earth here that is going to go according with the prophecy and the plan of God now he will always says we'll take care of his remnant people but we have to be mindful that a true love is not based on the blessing that we receive it is free from egoistic relationship ego it's not selfish it's not self-loving we love God no matter the situation that can come upon us or could be led for different reasons, um, economic, social, health reasons, and, and, and other things. And um, if we in true relationship with good marriage, we're not leaving our children when they're in need of us because they're not doing something. We are still there for them. We're still loving them as much because love, true love, does not love for something. It does not love for things. It does not love for things that we can get from somebody. The true love is when we love the person in spite of what he can or do or may not be able to do at that moment. And the same is with our Heavenly Father. He blesses us abundantly. But it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that we will not face the hard times. So I'm going to pray for that, that we will come to this understanding of the blesser, God being our blesser, being our giver, and he showed us his love first. And our love to him is not, should not be only seeking out for things when the times are good, but for him to love him no matter what. We receive that blessing or not. We receive that job with whatever payment we wanted or not, because everything should work out to a greater good at the end. And we have to have that relationship of trust and love not for things that we receive from, from him, not how big is the ho our houses or how, how great the things we have, but how we love him. He's the ultimate life giver. And we have this beautiful relationship with him and none of this stuff really matters. That the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory 
of the children of God. Again, children of God. So we have sons and children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but also we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit, even with ourselves grown within ourselves. Yes, so we are fighting. We are fighting the sin of the flesh with, our, uh, with ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. For in hope we have been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he already sees? Yes, we're going to talk about hope. But if we hope for what we do not see, we hope for what we do not see with perseverance. We wait eagerly for it. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself... <coughs> Excuse me. So, the Spirit himself intercedes when we're walking with the Lord closely, when we seek his will and we walk away from sins and we repent. We will feel how Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groaning too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows and who searches the hearts Jesus and God searches the hearts only he can search the hearts we don't know what's inside of other we can only see some of those those fruits what the mind of the spirit is so he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God interesting and yes and we know that God causes all things to work for good. It's one of this Bible verse that, you know, we love to use sometimes also when we are going through difficulties, tribulations. We, we are being tested to the bottom of the pit and we think, okay, what is going on here? Well, then this Bible verse is kind of lifting us up on our wings and saying, we know that it's going to work out for good at the end be patient this life is not forever here it's this life is really a precious gift it's a very interesting gift because it's a timely gift it puts a time in on us and it's really not forever but the tendency of the flesh and um the things that i have not heard much uh, been preached on is how people are limited to to the seen things ahead of time like they don't really want to think about ahead of time in terms of the spiritual things yes we think ahead of time a lot about you know which college we're gonna go and we plan ahead of them but i'm talking about ahead 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 of the time what is the really end you know, when you're on a deathbed, when you know that today your last breath will be taken, like how you would really want to live your life, like what really the priorities would be for your life then, and that's the ahead of time I'm talking about, the, the really seeing the purpose of your life to find, not just to go to a you know, good college, not to get just that best uh, paid position, all of that is great when we're helping people in our families but in the midst how we spend this little you know like littlest time that we have aside from work and chores how we treasure that time what do we do with it do we see that the purpose that god is really bringing us into kind of his purpose into our lives for those whom he foreknew he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren and these whom he predestined he also called 
and this whom he called he also justified, and this whom he justified he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, meaning for all of us he delivered, he gave his son to give us the redemption. How will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns Christ Jesus? Is, is he who died, yet rather who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us? This is a very important one. That he is talking to Christ, to God about us. He's pleading. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. You are considered as neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the depth. Love of God is in Jesus our Lord. Dear God, thank you so much for this beautiful word that we will now from this moment even more deeply can understand the difference between the flesh and the spirit and we want to be called your eternal sons and daughters and children please send your holy spirit into our lives fill our hearts and minds give us patience give us all the fruits of the spirit and help us to be kind to each other help us to carry your light in this dark world lord please be with each person send holy spirit into our families we are asking you in jesus holy name amen